What it do, what it do. It was your boy Jay Reed. Back at it again. More two for your head type. We got another guest on the platform. I don't even know what that does. Yo, what it do? What's popping? Hey, Big Lucy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call me. It's like, no, I'm talking junk. <laughs> you good, you good. Yes, hey, sir. Man, it's a pleasure having you on the platform, so let's get to it. I appreciate everybody, it. Tell everybody you born and raised in. Detroit, Michigan, man. Um, all day. Born and raised in Detroit, man. Where are you from? I'm from Dirty South. I'm from Dirty South, the Dirty Dirt. I'm South Carolina. Oh, for real? That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Some of the best artists down here in South Carolina, but you know what I'm saying? We don't get enough credit down here. They don't. Well, I'm going to change that. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't heard nobody come from. Uh, the baby is from South Carolina. No, he's from North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. North Carolina. Yep. Yep. Right. And uh, how you got the rap name? Uh, my brother gave me my rap name, my older brother. Uh, it used to be called Lucy B, but um, it's like a, a it's like another female rapper named Lucy B. So we was just like randomly going through names, and then the Gavali came up, and I was like, oh, I like that. And then it became Lucy Gavali, and it just stuck. Okay, Gavali. It's like designer. That's a designer brand, right? Gavali. Mm -mm. Cavali, C A V. Okay, C A V. Okay, excuse me. I don't even know how to pronounce that shit. Goddamn, I can't afford it anyways. <laughs> shit. Uh, right, right, right. Do you feel like your name got bigger because of your name? Do I feel like my name got bigger because of my name? Yeah, right. you feel you like know, you're the only person who ever um said like like the designer Cavali, and not nobody ever uh even nobody ever even mentioned that. When they speak, when they say my name, so no, I feel like I got big because I manifested that shit. Manifesto, and yes, sir. That's fair. That's fair. What made you start rapping? Man, um, um, I think it was just something I picked up. I used to, I always, as a kid, I was a writer, and it started off with like poetry and stuff. And then it just went into like um, music and shit like that. Uh, I grew up on Lil Bow Wow. So I was like, shit, if a kid can rap, I can rap. I used to want to be like a kid, kid rapper. But you know, shit didn't work out like that. So really, it was just something I picked up for real. Right, right, right. But shout out to Bow Wow, though, man. He's a legend in, in his own right. He's he is, own though. Right, you know? Uh, yeah, people, Shad Moss. Uh, no, yeah. People be sleeping on him trying to little dog him, but no, nah, he really paved the way for a lot of us. A lot of people rap now to this day because of Bob Wow. I don't know if he paved the way. I don't know if he's a legend, I shouldn't say that. But he, I feel like he, had, he is. I feel like he, he is. I feel like y'all I feel like people discredit him because of how corny he is now. But y'all gotta understand this boy been making music since he was five. Like and he's you know, he still make money no matter how corny he is. I He's right. Like he ain't had a hit song in 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be roasting that man, dog. Hey, I tried to, this is one thing I ain't gonna take from Bob. He done fuck a lot of bad bitches in the industry. And that's yeah, one damn thing I'm not gonna take from him. Yeah, he did. He 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 hit a lot of cold ones, man. For sure. He had a lot of cold ones. And, he, and, he's, and he's cold just like his career right now. Ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> freezer, his career is like a deep freezer in the back of McDonald's right now. No, real shit, though. No. I fuck with Bawa. He he corny. We we actually got into it in my DMs. He he just he's lame as fuck to me now. But like he's, I would never discredit him. Like I will always say, like he the reason why I rap. 
No, why did you get at him in the DM? Um, you know how them rappers was doing uh when that COVID shit hit and all them rappers was um uh, trying to get at artists to um put them on a mixtape for like thousands of dollars and shit like that. I don't know if you you heard of that, but me and him had got kind of got into it because I'm like I'm not paying you. I'm not paying you like no couple grand just to be on a mixtape that you not even going to fucking promote. And he was just basically on some, but do you know who I am type of thing. And I'm just like, yeah, irrelevant as fuck now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he's a cornball to me now, but I, but I would never discredit him from the impact he had on my life. Now everybody just know him from being on like Mike. <laughs> Man. Like Mike. No real talk though. Uh, yeah, yeah. He thousand. He um, he was charging. I can't even remember the number, but I know he was going back and forth. I was like, if I pay you a couple thousand, it's gonna be a cameo on my video. He like, oh, I'm not doing no cameos. This, this, and that, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you hopped in my fucking DMs. I didn't copy yours, man. You. So it was just like, yeah, you're corny, and kept it pushing. Yeah, I mean, that would have been nice to have a Bow Wow co-sign in the video. No, it really was. Especially him being one of the people who influenced me to rap, but to see like the um to see who he is now, I don't really care for him now. Nobody wants to see him rap no more. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear him. His own mama don't want to hear him rap no guy. No, no really? no, I heard he was putting out a couple uh some. So I heard he yeah, got. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. No, you really? keep that shit. Keep no, that really? shit for himself. No, real talk though. Don't nobody want to hear you, dog. Nobody want to hear that shit. <laughs> nobody want to hear no shad moss. No, nah. that two thousand flow. Nobody want to hear that early two thousand. No, nah, real shit though. No, nah, real shit though. I heard you got a verses coming with Romeo. I love to see that shit. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> my god. This is what is this two thousand one all over again? No, nah, no nah, real shit though. <laughs> what is this Nickelodeon awards or some shit? Nah. This, this is bullshit, man. Nah, I, I, I'm not. Shit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's the word him or Soulja Boy. But oh who, man. Don't get me started on Big Draco. That nigga oh so weird. Better stop before you make it clap. Uh, <laughs> what What are some other influences of yours? Um, career wise, um, Jay Z inspired me in like the business aspect. Like I like, I like Jay Z business mind more than his music. J Cole inspired me. Nipsey Hussle. Um. A lot of older, like a lot of older people in the game, inspire me. Like Nas, for real. Them like some of my big uh, Kendrick. Them some of my big um, and, um, influences for real. Okay, okay. And what was it like growing up in Detroit, man? That Detroit is very dangerous city. They say Detroit is dangerous, man. Growing up, you know, uh, my mama kept me really sheltered. So, like, I didn't see none of the danger, for real, until I got out on my own. So, me personally, growing up, I did see witness certain things a child shouldn't witness, but it wasn't nearly as dangerous as it is now. Like, it's like, you got to, it's like a, it's like a game of chess out here, man. You got to, you got to move a certain way or your ass is grass. Right, right. Uh, we just seen that so long ago, T. Grizzly, auntie got shot up. Um, they put up yes. the up. Yeah. Uh, why do you feel like Detroit is so bad, dude? The violence. The whole, let me get your whole face in the camera, dude. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, man, I couldn't even. T the the people, man. Um, the poverty. The, bro, Detroit is just. I couldn't tell you exactly why. I, why I feel like it's bad. I really feel like it's just really the people in the city. Um, and it, it's just. It's just it's just vicious out here. It ain't even as bad as people think it is. For real, for real, it's certain areas, but it's really just the people, just the gangs, we, the little the weak ass gangs they they think they got out here. It's not even as bad as people think it is. If you stay to yourself, you really don't get caught up in no it. But it's just really the people, the hood niggas. Um, for real, it's really it's really just the people. If you ask me. Hmm. What's the worst part of Detroit? The west side of Detroit. Um, the Brightmall area, like the Finkel area. Um, 
Yeah, mainly the west side, if you were to ask me, the west side. Have you ran into T. Grizzly, Big Sean, Eminem, any of those big number one people? Me and Big Sean is really cool. Um, I met T. Grizzly one time. I've never met Eminem. Right, okay. What about Cash Doll or Days Loaf? Uh, I had a show with Cash Doll. Me, personally, I don't really care for Cash Doll. She's, like, real arrogant and shit like that. Um, Days Loaf, I've never ran into Days Loaf or anything like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. What was with Detroit? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. They got the whole D12 Eminem group. Uh, Royce 5 down for Detroit. Um, I actually supposed to be meeting Royce soon. I met Bazaar from D12 numerous times. He's pretty, he's cool as hell. Right. What about Obi Trace? You know what? Obi Trace wrote me like last year. Somebody put him on to my music, but physically never met him, though. Okay. Do you like his music? He's an old school rapper. I would tell you, the honest to God, truth, I don't know not one OB Trice song. I just know he's like from Detroit and he he was somebody at one point. Was, I don't think he really was that. But he did a couple songs with Eminem. I think he was signed with D12 with uh, Eminem mm -hmm. Shady Records. Uh, first of all, who else from Detroit? Uh, I don't know. It's an old group called Slum Village. I don't know if you heard of them. I know Slum Village. Nope. I don't think I've ever. Nope. I've never met nobody from Slum Village. Oh, well, you know that group? Mm-hmm. I think one of them died, didn't it? Oh, I don't know. They got a song with Kanye. Did, didn't yeah. one of them have a solo career? I'm not sure. What? I know that one of them got a song with Ye. One of them got a song with Kanye. That's how I know them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you feel like uh, Detroit is making a name, like the music wave it's got going on? Detroit always had a name. I always, personally, I feel that way. I feel like the comeback, yeah. Like, I feel like... um. Detroit is birthing like a lot of new talented ass artists. But I, I I personally feel like Detroit always had that wave. It just died down, you know. Um and then Atlanta had they run. But now I feel like Detroit is coming back because we got forty two dub, we got Sada Baby, we still got um T Grizzly, we got a couple big name people putting on for the city. And then a couple more people that's getting scooped up out of here. So I definitely feel like D Trade is on fire right now. Then you got Trick Trick, Danny Brown. Danny oh Brown yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just was watching the interview with Danny Brown. Um and Trick Trick. That's funny. Yep. Definitely. And uh then they got the legendary producer Jay Dilla. Um, oh my god, I just gave him a shout out in one of my songs. Definitely legendary. Uh Definitely, Jay Dilla. He was a good producer, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, I was about to say just now. Oh, I, who are some of your favorite artists out of Detroit, though? Like, your top five Detroit rappers? Oh, my top five are underground artists, to be honest. Um, well, one of my favorite artists, two of my favorite artists um, that people know probably know of is uh, Vezo. And Cash Kid, but like I, I like more so underground artists that's like making a name for themselves, opposed to like niggas who done made. Them. I listen to like a lot of my friends' music. Um, yeah, I don't really a lot of Detroit rap music. I don't really care for it because it's all the same shit, different beat. If you ask me, but like I like Bezo, I like Payroll, I like Payroll a lot, and I like Cash Kid. What about BDF Pittman? Do you feel like he sound like T Grizzly? Cause I feel like he does. Mm -hmm. I only heard a couple of his songs, and I feel like he had his own flow. I never got that T Grizzly vibe from him. I would have to definitely listen to his music more to see what you saying. I, I know you heard Joe Exotic with uh, him and Sada Baby. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I think it's funny as fuck. Though. Yeah, yeah. He said it like I jump off the bridge before I put my dick in plastic. Yeah. I said, what the fuck? I like him though. I like him though. I like the he's creative. Funny as shit. Like he's shit. He's a shitty rapper. Well, I think he's funny as shit. He's not a good rapper oh, yeah, at all. He's funny as yeah. I about to, I, that's what I thought you said. He is a funny ass rapper, and I really like the creativity he brings. Cause I'm a creative artist myself. So when I see creativity in somebody's music, I automatically relate. So I definitely fuck with him. Oh, uh, he's only fat, and I know that's embracing it. <laughs> 
I love I love this confidence thing, man. No real he, shit though. <laughs> uh and then he said and I think Sada Baby mentioned something in his song I remember. He said we already got coronavirus vaccine coming out, but they ain't never fixed Flint water. What's your, thoughts, what's your thoughts on that? That's twelve years, ten years in the making. And it's still yeah, fixed so water. That's just <laughs> that good, that just goes to show you how shitty our fucking state is. <laughs> I really do feel for those people out in Flint. And then I heard that they're finally now about to give, like, each resident, like, $4,500. Damn. So that's, that, that that goes to show you how shitty our state is. And um, I wish it was more that we can do as a whole. But, yeah. Uh, by the way, Tierra Marie from Detroit. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. she, she, came, she came and went, dude. She was a follow-up. One-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I don't understand. I, I remember I seen Obama like take a sip of water. That was mm -hmm. like the smallest sip of water he ever sipped in his fucking life. Mm -hmm. Somebody he sipped some of the Flint water and said it's okay to drink. To Man, bitch. I ain't see that shit. But yeah, okay. Uh, then P and then DDG from uh Detroit. I think not from Detroit from Pontiac. Yeah, he's from Pontiac. Uh, do you respect? Do you respect him as a rapper? I've only heard one song, and that was literally like two days ago, with the Coily Ray girl. Do I? I don't. I don't really know him to really say if I respect him or not. But the song I did hear, I actually liked. Um, I have seen like interviews and things with him. I think he's a corny, corny ass nigga. But I respect anybody who make it out of Michigan. So, how far are Pony from Detroit? Uh, twenty five to thirty minute drive. Okay. Uh, you see a lot of YouTube rappers though. He did a song with DDG called Moonwalk in Calabasas. I think mm -hmm. that's a big song, but his album flop. Like it only sold like five thousand copies. Definitely can't go too far with that shit. You lying? It did. Yeah, probably less than that. And he had a feature from every fucking big artist in the industry who hot young boy and all that, and he still, still. He sold, he sold five k copies on that. Oh wow, I did not know that. First week. This is very bad. Yeah, yeah, for sure. His album was the pandemic. It's state of emergency right now. You stupid man. <laughs> DCG is fucking horrible, bro. He need to do what Glo Logan Paul is doing, boxing him, because his rap shit ain't cutting it off. Wow. I mean, I, I don't even I don't know the boy music like that enough. But damn, that that is pretty bad. Very bad. Uh, do you feel like the streams do even matter nowadays? Because everybody kind of just want to go to that single instead of listen to the album. Or... Oh yeah. Um, but I do feel like streaming is big because that's how you get paid as an artist. But I do feel like albums are now irrelevant unless you like fucking J Cole. You know what I'm saying? Like people, like as far as like these new age rap rappers, nobody wants to hear an album. We just really care for like dropping singles at the single and because they can't rap. <laughs> Say that again, bro. They can't rap because I don't feel like no, they put. Man. I don't feel like they their music is so diverse and it they put out an album though because all these no, songs yeah. are the same. Yeah, no real shit though. You're not lying. That's exactly how I feel for sure. A lot of these niggas can't rap. It just be catchy. Well, that'll help you though. Especially got TikTok these dumbass dance moves and shit. Like yeah. Spot and Gotham can't rap to save his fucking life. Next summer yeah. he's gonna be a fucking nobody. No real shit though. He that one hit. He's gonna be more than likely a one hit. I pray him, but I I, I just pray a nigga make it far. I want everybody to get money, but he's, he's I, got, got to have somewhat talent. Some you do. Talent. You do definitely. Definitely. He'll be an Uber driver next year. He'll be driving <laughs> Lyft. He'll be picking you up probably next year in Detroit. Lyft. Shut the fuck up. Lyft say. services are hiring, guys. No, Lyft <laughs> is hiring. Oh uh, yeah. I think you had a, I see you had a pick on a Bentley. Is that your Bentley? That is not my Bentley. I think I even said it in the caption so people do not get it misconstrued. Why you did it though? Why you why you, you could have lied and flakes on the green like everybody else? I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna I mean, you already put it up there like it was yours. You should have just lied. Everybody <laughs> else doing it. No, sir. No, sir. It was a rental, though. It was a rented Bentley. It was not personally mine. How did it feel to rip that Bentley for 24 it, hours? It was irrelevant as fuck. I'm telling you that now. None of the sweet cars I've ever rented was like, it was just like, I want to see what it's like. Seeing what it was like, it's not, it's not really nothing, to be honest. Not to me. 
And how much it cost to rent something like that? Oh, that wasn't that much. I think I had it for the weekend, and it was like maybe like seven a seven hundred or it might like a thousand on down. It wasn't that much. Yeah, you did cash or credit? They do like a deposit. Um, wait, I think I pay all all on um, my debit card. Yeah. Did you get a lot of attention in that car? I only uh, needed it for a video. Mm, yeah and no. I only did it for, I only needed it for um, like a video. It was my birthday weekend and I used it for like a video shoot and shit like that. Damn. That's nice. That's nice. How did it feel driving it? Like, was it fast? Or like... Oh, yeah. It was fast. It was very smooth. It's a very nice car, but it wasn't nothing like how people make it seem on the internet. And then you had a pick with Dream Chaser. Yeah. I was up at um I got flew out on Wednesday. Um uh, not to not to the Dream Tracers, um not mill shit, but like he got this partnership with the label I just signed with. He got like a partnership with them or whatever, and he got like his own little section and shit dedicated to him out at the out there. So I, yeah, I took a picture in front of that. So did you have a chance to even speak with me? Nope. I didn't get a chance to speak with me. And what label are you saying to? Ethica slash Sony. Ethica? Mm-hmm. Mm. Sony. I believe Michael Jackson bought Sony. Uh, Did he? Yeah, well, yeah. He's rich as fuck. He's wealthy. Uh, listen, I can believe that, man. Uh, What, what made you sign the deal is this there to go the independent route? Um, I'm still going to be independent after I'm done with them. I'm only giving them um, one EP um, because of the benefits that came with the deal and the connections. Um, but I'm I'm only giving them one EP um, because I do like being independent. Um, but I'm definitely like the like what they're trying to do for the artists that they're trying that they're looking at the sign is like you really. Shouldn't, I really don't want to pass it up for real, for real. But I am just gonna get in one EP and see see if I stay longer. If not, I'm probably gonna go back. Depending. And what made you want to speak with the, the dream chasers? Like, what you feel like they can do for you that you can't do for yourself, or like that you can't so, get out the mud. So, um, one thing I wanted from the label was the business, like the business aspect of things like everything else I learned on my own. I taught myself, but I want to learn like the business behind the music industry and, um, marketing, like proper marketing, um, and the connections, like everything else I can do on my own. I just need to be placed in certain rooms with certain people. Um, and then it's always good to have like people in the industry that can help you. Cause there's only so much an independent artist can do on their own. So to be able to sign a deal and touch hands with certain people, that was some, that was one of my goals for this year. Yeah, you need a team. It's a team. It's a collaborative effort, man. Uh, it is. You got to have that partnership. You got to. It's it's a cliche, but teamwork makes the dream work. Boy, you no real shit though. That's real to, shit. You got to have an army behind you. Drake has Drake don't have a team. He got the Navy, Army, the. <laughs> Man, all four branches got them. Not, yeah, that shit running. Man, you not lying, man. For real. Even Travis Scott. Yeah. Somebody like a big artist like that, the weekend. The motherfuckers have an army. They have the branches, the four branches, the navy, the marines, all them people to help them move and make them be the star that is. They do. They do. A lot of people see on the internet, they probably got ten or fifteen. They got a whole goddamn football team of people to keep that shit running. They do. No real shit though, they do. Uh what did, who did you meet at the office? I met the owner, Matt Cook. Um, I met everybody who pretty much work at Ethica, and they show, and they was just telling me everybody they work with. They worked with a lot of big name people in the industry. Uh, Rick Ross has actually got like a joint deal with them too, um, which is ironic because I get to open up for Rick Ross um, this summer, so it was good to see. Like, oh, shit, Rick Ross with y'all, too. Y'all got something with Meek Mill. They got a lot of things with, like, Corley Ray, too. They do a business with, like, a lot of people in the industry. So I only really met the people that personally work for um, Ethica. I met the guy. Um, I met the I met one of the producers that uh, be working with Fetty Wap a lot. 
So yeah, other than that, wop. I didn't really meet. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. You don't need to work with him because Fetty Wap can't buy a hit right now. Fetty Wap is it's, it's Fetty Wap is in dear dire need right now to get a hit. He take the right. picture with Bobby Smurder to try to get the buzz back. That's how bad he fell off right now. He's, Man. he's fucking dying right now. His career's on life support. He could Man, pass away at any moment. <laughs> I know, man. I know. I swear, man. Uh, anyway, just uh, sad. there's a sad case of a lot of talent, but I don't feel like he utilized his talent. Nope. 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 I don't think he would ever be. And then I'm, I'm, I'm really cool with them, but I have to keep it real. I really feel like he needs probably some new, some writers or whatever. But I don't feel like he would ever get that big hit like Trap Queen. No, he'll never get he'll never get that buzz like he had in 2014-15. That is fucking over with. Uh, look at them. Yeah, it's, it's over with Fetty, man. It didn't rain dry for him, man. It's over. Yeah, so no he came out hard, blazing. But now he just like shed mouth. They all washed up. They Ajax. We call them yeah. Ajax. They had their time. They had their time. Their time came and went. Yeah, for sure. Now all they're doing is worth is posting pictures on Instagram and bullshit like that. So, yeah. I guess that's what happens. That's retired rappers game now. Being yeah. washed up and taking pictures on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit though. Real shit. So you name a song Young and Made without saying the name. Like why you did that? You ain't even name you ain't say her name in the song, but you named the song that why you did that? Um, because my I, I bit one of her one of her one of my favorite songs from her, she says, um, I didn't turn my textbook into a checkbook. And my course says I didn't turn my textbook into a checkbook. So like younger May fans would um they will understand what I mean. I didn't I didn't say her name in it at all, but I definitely uh I, I definitely took some of her lyrics and put it into my song. Okay. Um I don't feel like she used, I don't feel like she used that buzz how she had in twenty sixteen either. I felt like she left a lot on the table. And she's a very talented artist, but she just left a lot on the table. Mm. I don't feel like she's working hard like she should. Yeah, Talent I follow don't her waste on, it. I follow, I follow her on YouTube, and she drops um content off. She got like um she she's one of those. I, I feel like she's like a B list cele celebrity. Like she's not a big name artist, but I do feel like she does. She she keeps her money going shall i say like she was just on a couple magazine covers um she do what she have to do to make her money i don't feel like i don't feel like she would have like a big a big hit like ooh again but then again she is somebody that surprises me because she can make nice songs i've I've heard like a couple of nice songs after i that. feel like she, i feel like she stole bobby smarter flow with hot nigga a little bit she was um, on that song or are you just saying all together i'm saying in that song ooh Ooh, I, feel, I would have to listen to it again. I didn't pick the. I didn't pick up. Listen to Hot Nigga and Bobby Smurder. You hear the similarities. You hear the cadences. The, you, they both from New York too. So she, she probably did. I, I felt like she should. I felt like she should have dropped the album when she was like at her, at her peak. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like like a lot of artists they go on tour and they make that bag. And they think they could take off a year or whatever without putting out no music or an album. Yeah. And then people forget about them because mm -hmm. music is constantly, constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then you did a song called Daddy Princess. Why don't you explain that song for everybody? Oh, I was just pretty much um, painting a picture of how, like, growing up, um, I didn't have my dad in my life. But as an adult, I don't really... I was like angry as a child because I would see females with kids. I mean, I would see females with their dad and be like, damn, where's my dad? But like, you know, we're, we're really good now. We're really at a good space. And it's just really me writing a song saying like, I forgive him and I don't blame him for not being in my life. It's really like I, any girl who feel that way at a certain point in your life for you to heal, you need to forgive certain things. So really that's, that was pretty much um, um, that was pretty much my thoughts when I was writing that song. Right, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. You know, we're growing up without having a father. Uh, a lot of people can relate to that. Right, can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You said in the last verse, love yourself if you ain't had no daddy. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women 
trying to find love in they, they men and they boyfriends, but what they fail to realize is if you don't love yourself first, you will never find that love in nobody else. So that's really me saying love yourself, even if a man couldn't, you know. Don't you feel like that's on deserved video? Do you feel Say like that's on deserved video? Phone. Do you feel like that's on no, deserved video? video? Yeah, we're okay. definitely um writing the script. We already got the script done to that video. Um, I just was busy because I do movies as well. So we was too we was busy getting out a movie, but we're about to get back to putting out videos now. And what movies have you played in? What made you do acting? It was really just something to do. I because I knew I was good at writing, so I was just like, let me write a movie. Um. And shit, it just went from there. I'm I'm only in two of my movies. I got three of them out now, and they on YouTube it's called Betrayal, Betrayal One and Betrayal Two. Did you take like performing arts in school? I did not. It was just something I picked up. Right. Do you play any instruments? Nope. Okay. Do you remember like your first performance? Yep, I think I had four hours to memorize a song so once somebody dropped out in the other play um it was it was like sister act play i had to do like the rapping part and i think i had four hours to less than four hours to learn that rap or whatever and i did it and shit and i knew right in there i was like oh i like this and then like that was when i was like sixth grade and I didn't really take music seriously until like I was nineteen. Right, right. Did you get it? Did you get it down pat? You had to wrap it acapella. Yeah, I did. I actually, I remember that like it was yesterday. I got that shit down packed. Like I killed that shit. But is it is it kind of difficult to remember your lyrics when you don't have it playing? You just gotta remember acapella without hearing the beat or whatever. Um, you talking about like now? Yeah. Nope, not for me. You remember it like like it's you know like it's nothing. Yeah, it's just yeah. Um, like I don't really perform. I got like a shitload of songs. I really don't perform songs that's like freshly new until I really know I know the lyrics to it. So like I would never get on stage and perform a song that I know for sure I may not really know it like that. Right, right, right. Do you ever like go? Do you write your lyrics? Mm hmm So you ever go back and like study your lyrics and then you remember, try to remember? Yeah. I, or I play the song out for like days. Like I play the fuck out of um I play the out because I got my own studio. So like I just write music so much now and just record it. There's some some songs I don't really I listen to certain songs I record and be like, I don't even remember writing this shit. Uh then you did a song called Beauty and the Struggle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, then you say you had a speech problem, and, like, I think in the song, like, some of the, like what, what kind of speech problem do you suffer with? Yeah. I never was diagnosed, but I know for a fact I have a speech problem to the point where certain words I cannot say on the track if I'm rapping. Like, I have a problem with um, saying L, like, the any, like, like, word with an L in my songs. It's like every time I go to rap it, it it just it's it's like it comes out weird to the point where I have to punch in my um verses now. Certain it's like like a certain now I'm now I've been noticing like um certain things I just can't say like like I get tongue twisted like certain shit it just be like damn and I don't know if it's the braces or not but yeah. How long you have your braces? Four years. Okay. How old? How, how how you said how old am I? Yeah. Twenty seven. Oh wow, you got yours late. Like, who made you get them so late? Uh, my mama couldn't afford them growing up. I had got mine at twelve to sixteen. Uh, they cool to have braces now. I really wish I would have got Invisalign. I should have listened, but whatever. Okay. Okay. Uh, was that? did it hurt when you first got your braces? Oh hell yeah! I I I couldn't that, that first couple of months it was like I didn't I didn't like it at all. 
I feel it, should, it look cool to have that grill in your mouth. It, that's exactly what I got it for, but my teeth was fucked up. Um, I, it was definitely like, oh, these bitches, look, they look sweet. But then it was like, I don't even care for this shit no more. When you get them off, they've been on there for a long time. Yeah, I'm, they come. Yeah, they come off this year, probably before December. I'll be no more braces. That's lit. That's good. That's good. Uh, beauty in the struggle. Like explain, like explain that song. How do you find beauty in the struggle? Like, how do you manage to have joy in the situation? Like when you feel like shit just ain't moving how you want it to move. Things ain't going how you want it to go. It it's really um, it was really. I really got that saying from um, a J. Cole song, one of my favorite J. Cole songs. That got me through a lot. Love Yours? Um, yes. Yeah. Yep. One of my favorites, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hell, yeah. It was just really me realizing that um, that people that's, that's handed shit, they, won't, they don't have that same structure as people who had to really grind it struggle for that shit and I always tell my friends like um you really have to understand the, the the beauty in your struggle like it made you who you are it made you strong it made you learn a lot of lessons so I always think you know I, I am always grateful for like the times I did struggle I did have to bust my head or the lessons I learned because it made me who I am like really strong and I and I really I'm glad I wasn't just handed certain things i'm glad i had to work for certain shit so it really was me just saying like um it's beauty in the struggle and it's you know it's okay to accept your um your flaws and it's okay to bump your head and shit like that right 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 uh people gotta realize it man success is a process it mm -hmm. don't happen overnight no yeah for sure you know, only time work come, only time success come before work is in the dictionary Right, damn. That's right, deep. that's deep, bro. I'm, I may still that and put that in a rap. I don't know. You know I'm trying to come before work. Damn, my fifth grade teacher always used to tell me that shit. I ain't understand until I got older, bro. Mm-hmm. That's fire. You know, that's the only time that shit happened, though, man. But we got social media thinking that being a rap star, you think you're going to just pop off after your first single, first mixtape, or whatever. Yes. This is a long, drawn-out process, if you're serious about it. For everybody yes. who's like Real shit, though. Real shit though. Uh, speaking of J. Cole, do you feel like this album is good? Like is you feel like he had his peak still with this album or how, how do you feel about his new album? I'm going to say you the honest to God truth. I have yet to sit down and dissect his album because I've been so busy. <clears throat> the few songs I did hear, I feel like it's a different J. Cole. He came with a different mindset and I feel like he did that because people so used to him being this this spiritual or this teacher or whatever the case may be the songs I heard it was like wow this is a different Cole like he's really stepping outside of who he used to be but I'm only speaking about this the songs I heard I haven't heard the whole album so I would have to hear the whole album to really get you to a proper response how many uh what, what songs do you have your I heard, um, I think it's called Amari. I heard the one with the one with him and Moray, and I think his interlude. I believe it. Was. How do you feel about that song, My Life? That's one of my favorite joints out the album so far. Is that the one with Moray? Yeah, Twenty One Savage. I I definitely fuck with that. First off, Moray is one of my favorite new artists out right now. Oh, so, I can't get into his music though. I thought that hook was gonna help me get into his music, but mm. he's still suspect to be. Yeah. I already, I, you know what I like about artists more than their music is their grind. Now, how did you get to work at now? So that's what really make me like a person and make me want to listen to their music. Like, you know, I listened to his interview in the Breakfast Club or whatever, and I was like, oh, I like him. You know, like he was a he's a he was a struggling artist just like me. Um, but I really like that song. I like Moray. I like Twenty One Savage. You know what I'm saying? I, I did. I didn't think I was gonna get off into Twenty One Savage. I thought he's gonna be one of those, um, you know, weak ass new age rappers. He ain't really got. He's I, okay. Like he ain't like. Nah, he, he he's. I'm not gonna say he's my go to artist or nothing, but you know, do you feel like he out rap J Cole or something? Oh no, no about that. 
let me. I'm gonna have to listen to it again. You must feel that way. That's why. That's why you're saying that. Do you feel like? I don't want to keep telling you. I think he got J. Cole. I don't know. Yeah, rapper. I think he did a little bit. I think he got him. I don't think he's an overall better rapper, but I think he got him. Right, in that no, yeah, but I'm gonna have to oh, I'm gonna have to listen to that shit again. I, I thought his verse was verse was real good though. You said his verse was yeah. His verse fire though. Yeah, hell yeah. I, don't, I think he got it though. He has some he has some uh Standout bars that were good quotable IG catchers though, so maybe mm -hmm. that's why like they good catchers. You could use some twenty one savage shit. People could use that. Like he has bars like I disrespect you respectfully. Some shit. I was like, damn, that's some catchy ass shit right there. Like, yeah, really. So, <laughs> it was like, uh, yeah. Well, I think it did. I think he got some little baby on there. I think little baby ate him up on that song too. I ain't heard that song yet. Lil Baby is one of my favorite new rappers out now, too. I can't get into his, his music like that. I never was a fan of him, but a, okay. lot, of, a lot of people like him. Mm -hmm. What other celebrities have you opened up for, like, on stage? My password? 3280. Um, um, Megan Thee Stallion, Cowboy, Lucci, Polo G., uh, money bag yo, and that's it so far. Okay, what was it like opening up for the artists? Like, what was the bag like? So, I didn't get nearly as big as the bag as they did. Um, the biggest bag I got was for money bag, and that was $1,100. <clears throat> uh, but the overall experience and connections is really what I care for mainly. Um, uh, and every last one of those artists was cool as fuck. Cash Doll was on the Megan Thee Stallion concert, and she was the only one I didn't really care for. But um, Money Bag was really cool. Um, Megan Thee Stallion, we didn't really talk like that. It was very brief. Uh, Cowboy and me and him still talk to this day. Uh, Polo G was really cool too, um, but I didn't really know nothing about Polo G at that time. L oh, Lucci, Lucci was the one. Um. Lucci was a little standoffish, but he was still cool. Okay. Uh, so, do you still talk to Moneybagger? No. Um, no, I don't talk to Moneybag. The only one I do talk to is Cowboy or whatever. Uh, Moneybag and me just, um, we had conversations. That gave me advice on like the industry. Um, what he told you? He said, you know, just keep going. Everybody ain't your friend. He said, you know, just keep going. Like, just keep going, little sis. Everybody ain't your friend. Um, and we was talking about his interview. He did it. He did a documentary on me back, like, five, six years ago. And I was telling him, like, you know, when they offered me to open up for you, I really didn't know nothing about you. Um, and I'm going to have to, you know, keep it real. And I was like, um, but I watched your documentary and it made me actually like you. And then I started listening to your music and it wasn't, you know, bad. I actually bought his album too. That just came out and I really like it. And I was like, you know, I listen, I learned some things from your, your documentary that I will apply to my life now. And other than that, it was, that was really it, you know, and he watched me, he watched me put, open up for him and stuff like that. Um, and then we think we talked a little bit after he got off the stage, and then that was it. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, that's late right there. And uh, what about to say? Then you did a song called Slide. Hey, mm -hmm. How that came together? Really, I was in Dallas for this um this radio interview, and I had got the beat, and I I was um I always wanted to write like a. R. Kelly had this one song back in the day. It was like a step, step, right, the right, whatever. I forgot. And I always wanted to write a song like similar to that. Step in like the love. Yeah, with like a dance phrase to it. And then I got the beat, and then shit, the words just came. And that's really how I got slide. Mm. I thought that was like a song about sex. It, it is. It's about sex, but it's also a dan dance song. It's one of those Aaliyah rock the boat things. Like people think Aaliyah rock the boat mean one thing, but it actually is her talking about sex. So it's really like one of those type of songs. Oh, you good? Mm-hmm. What made you want to uh, make that decision? 
Did you want to choose that path? It really not. It really just came naturally, and for real, for real, it really wasn't like, oh, I'm just gonna do this for this. It really just genuinely came naturally. Okay. Um, and you always been that way. With my music, yeah, definitely. You don't plan on changing. I mean, I'm always open to changes, but um, it really be the beat. It really be the instrumental. I hear an instrumental. I hear a beat. Whatever. No, I'm talking about changing from being straight to being gay. That's what I'm saying. Oh, going to straight from gay? Yeah. I will always be gay because there's nothing I find interesting in a man. Personally, I have nothing against men, though. Interesting. Uh, do guys still try to talk to you? All the time. Like two, three try to talk to me just today. And they don't see you dress like them? Masculine? Of of course they do. How do they? How do they approach you? I don't want to know. Like, what are they saying? Um, one guy I was driving, and he slowed up and was like pulling his window down. <clears throat> it's fucking Detroit. My window was already down, so I'm like, "What the fuck is he about to do?" So I slowed up, and then he was like, "What type of what type of fragrance you got on?" And I'm just like, "What?" He was like, what's your number? What's your number? Nigga, no. I'm not giving you my number. I don't even fucking know you to be giving you my number. But they they mainly slide on me in my DMs. Um, and I always ask them, like, shit, well, are you gay? Because I feel like, you know, men that try to talk to me, you must have, like, some gay tendencies. Because, like, I don't come off as girly or whatever the case may be. And then their favorite thing is, well, you still a girl and you still got this, this, and that, but I mean, I I don't know. I don't take it. I don't take it offensive or anything like that. That's just a nigga for you. Okay. You talk to girls who like guys? You just like girls that like girls only, too? I don't talk to girls that like guys anymore. No. Why, why is that? Because you gotta worry about too much with bisexual women. What do, have, what do you have to worry about? Um, If they out sucking dick. Or fucking a nigga and coming back bringing you diseases and shit. Even you gotta worry about that with um, girls who claim they 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 super gay. But like, I try my best not to date bisexual women or women with kids anymore. It's just too much that come with it. Wait a minute, you say gay now? You talking about super gay? It's levels to this shit. Yeah. Yes. It's God, like damn. mad levels to this shit. Whoa, 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 whoa! So you feel like? If you got a girl, she fucking a dude. Do that hurt your feelings? Or? Mm -mm. It don't hurt my feelings. It's just um, <clears throat> I'm very precise about like I people cheat. Yeah, cool. But nine times out of ten, with bisexual women, they 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 messing with niggas, and then it's two. You don't know who that nigga messing with, and it's really I really be worried about catching something, and you know all that type of shit. So like I try my best to stay away from bisexual women. You know, or I don't know. I me yeah, I don't really go for bisexual. If they tell me they're bisexual, I instantly be like, oh, then it's a wrap. Do you use dildos? Do I use dildos? Yeah. Yeah, I do use dildos. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you like use the dildos, or you like them to be used on you? I, I'm not talking about saying I'm using a dildo. I don't like penetration. And it's not uncomfortable talking about it. I'm very open like a book. Uh, so you like to be the man? Well, yeah, in a sense, yeah. So when you with a girl, do you like her to be feminine? Because you already feel masculine, I feel like. So I'm not at all. I'm very feminine, though. Um, I prefer feminine women because... Um, I don't really like dominant women. And it, I don't really like dominant women at all. I'll tell you one thing about the gay girl. That's the proper word to say gay. Gay that's women, y'all are very protective of y'all women. Y'all don't even want a guy to look at y'all. I'll be looking oh, at you. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. They, that's weird, man. Um, yeah, I've I, I witnessed that thousands of times. I'm not like that, though. Because for one, I know. If I'm with somebody, she's more than likely like cute as hell, and I know men gonna look. So it's no purpose of me being like, "Oh, stop looking at my woman, nigga." And it's like, no, that's dumb. And you say you used to do, uh, why? 
Oh, that's very interesting. So you got strap ons basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. And you always use them on the partner. Sometimes, um, you know, it's other. It's having sex with women is very interesting, very fun, and you don't always use like dildos or strap ons. No. Do you feel like women are to eat better pussy than men? Well, I haven't. I haven't done nothing with a with a guy in like fucking decades. From what I can remember, I never I never liked it because I was never really interested in men. I I was only doing it because uh like I didn't come out the closet type of thing or like to please my mom. But women, yes, can sexually please other I feel like women give head better than men. Don't you feel like all women want some good dick though? How can a goddamn strap on a fake dick without any real veins of pressure please a woman? Like some real dick, though. You would have to ask those women. Because I am i don't get, like, I don't, it doesn't, I don't get penetration. But what do you get out of that, though? Because you can't feel the dick. You don't know what the pussy feels like, <laughs> really, with a strap on. It's hard to explain. So, like, you know the part it's attached to. When you put it on and you're doing it to a girl, it like rubs up against you as you doing it to her. It's really one of those things where I tell men all the time when they ask me that question. You would physically have to be in a room to see, to understand it. It's really hard to explain. You hear all that? That's Detroit for you. Wow. Well, Detroit Police Department. Yep. It's a See, hot you, So what you're saying is you open the head station for the guys to demonstrate for them. I'm not. I would say yeah because I always wanted to be um, a porn star, so I really don't care because I know I wouldn't have sex with a guy. But like y'all ask so many questions that it's so hard to explain, and my only answer is like you would have to be there to understand. Right. What are some more frequent questions that they ask you? Um, what you just asked? Um, they be like, "Do you get your, do you get your strap sucked?" Um, oh, I forgot. Damn. They ask a lot of shit. Like, well, is that true though? Do you get your straps up? I do not. I think that's a mental illness. Um, <laughs> I mean, you fucking somebody with a flapping dick. Hold you up. know, <laughs> but to to physically to physically put your mouth on there and spit on it and do all that crazy shit I've seen in porn is like a lot. Um, you have a a pre. <laughs> What you call it a not a prosthetic leg? You got a prosthetic dick mm -hmm. attached to you. You like mm -hmm. you know? How do you put a strap on on for everybody? So it's it's really like it's like it it comes like once again I don't, it has to be one of those things I have to demonstrate in front of you. It comes like basically like underwear or something like that you just put your legs through like the strap you put them around your waist and you just tighten it then they got these new things where they got um they got like underwear with like a hole in it now you just put the uh you just put it through the um you just put the strap through the hole and then you got it like that now but once again it's one of those things that you would have to physically see in person to understand how it works do you watch like gay porn? Yes, I do. Do it female? I watch or all porn. I watch pretty much all porn. You watch, watch even the, the guys too? Huh? <laughs> um, I've watched it before. That's another. I don't really. Well, yeah, wait, no. my goodness. So you say you do watch it. I, this is, it was a debate on Twitter a couple of days ago. They were saying that the porn that our parents had, the DVDs are better than the one on TV, on the ones on the computer. Like, you know. Uh, you damn Pornhub and all that. Would you agree with that? I feel like we only feel that way because we had no business watching that shit back in the day. And I don't know. I don't know. Because I, my mom and them didn't keep that shit around. We used to have to sneak like, what, like 12 a.m. and watch like HBO Max or something like that where it was kind of censored. Um, I don't, you know what, it probably, because I, I remember watching some back in the day. They was trifling. They did. 
they got down with the get down. I I guess you can say that though. I guess you yeah. I I would I would agree. Right, 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 right. I feel like the old porn DVDs had way unfiltered. They, they was, was yeah. You they was getting it in. Back black booty busters, girls on the goddamn thing, fucking sucking on the goddamn screen cup. You already knew what she was about to go down, goddamn. Uh, no rush. Right, Russia. right. Right. So when you was watching this, you did, did you, that's when you started discovering yourself. Um, you know, I can remember. I can remember back as early as like five, six, seven years old. Um, liking women, knowing like like interested in women. Like I was very young. I was like, yeah. That's when you started masturbating. Oh, I didn't. I didn't start doing that till like fucking high school. I never masturbated as a kid. I knew I was interested in women as a kid. Okay. So then you started masturbating. You were masturbating to the women. And the thoughts that you masturbated to porn that you was watching. Yeah. I never masturbated to porn um, until, like, early up in age. Um, to women porn. To porn, period. Shit. I don't, the sound of it, shit. I'm just the a freak to be honest uh i'm not one of, i'm not one of those lesbians that be like ew men are disgusting or this this and that like i have nothing against me and i just personally don't like them so i would i would have sex with a woman to heterosexual porn it's like it's it is what it is to me right 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 like do you feel like it's healthy to watch porn though is it good for relief or to each his own um i don't i don't watch i don't think when i watch porn is just because I'm watching porn. I don't go into it with like, what is the intent on watching this porn? Do you skip to the, to the part of the fuck part? <laughs> or you just got them listen to the goddamn bullshit skit? I fucking hate in porn when they just kissing and talking and shit. Like, get to smacking them buns. I don't want to see shit else. You, want, you just want to see the, see the cheeks clapping and all that good shit. Goddamn. <laughs> well, that's all I really care about. It'd be funny to be there to be having these skits like, I'm the cable guy. Or no. I got, I'm the pizza man. I, I no, got this delivery. Shit. Oh, real shit, though. I hate that shit. Like, okay, yeah, where is the action at? But my thing is, it's kind of lying differently when they, when they ride around somebody trying to pick up girls and they see yes. a girl walking. Yeah, like, that that's... shit is so scripted. <laughs> yeah, uh, you trying to suck some cock for 50 bucks? <laughs> no, real shit, though. And they just be like, oh, we already know that was set up like that. This is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, yeah, I read, I read the research. They said women watch just as much porn as men. If not more, to me personally. You be you be having your headphones in so you can hear the moans and stuff loud. Yep, I just started doing that shit this year. That's funny you say that. Right, it help you focus more better. Like what's going on? It's it's, it's not even a focus. It's I'll be wanting to hear the girl moan. Um, right. I'll be wanting to hear everything that's going on. Right, 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 right. It's a whole lot better than watching it on the TV. And then you oh, got right. it really locked in. Like, yeah. And then, okay, okay, but like, when somebody calling you while you getting off, do you answer the phone, or do you text them I, back, or what? Fuck, I get mad. I decline it for sure, and I don't text. I don't never exit out that shit. I get pissed off though when somebody in the. Well, now the iPhone got the app where you can like lo make the screen lower, and you can take while you're doing it now for the new iOS update. Oh yeah, I got that. I still get mad though. Do not call me. <laughs> um, it's me time right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Do you ever feel like disgusted with yourself after you finish or whatever? You know, yes, I just right. every single not what do you feel like shame or you just feel like God I'm damn like, Oh, you was just it's like soon as you, you bust and you release, it'd be like Bro, like I don't I feel like I feel it just be like, bro, you was just horny yourself for no reason. It's just like it's all over with now. Back to your daily daily program. Do you feel like porn take you away from reality a little bit, though? Like, goddamn, will you be stressing or whatever? And you just ejaculate? Hmm. I never... You know what? Because I usually just smoke weed for that. Much right. Time. Weed always have that. Some good weed. It, I feel like when I'm stressing or anything like that, I don't think about no type of sex, for real, for real. Yeah, it's amazing now, though. Before, back in the day, they always said porn was for men. But now, society has changed. And more women have started to be open with this right now. More than no, that. yeah. A lot of women I when kicked it with or talk to, they always be like, before we go to like have sex, you wanna watch porn? You wanna have a porn on? And it just be like a lot of women is into porn. 
what's, what's your favorite site? Pornhub, like everybody? I feel like I'm a burnt Pornhub out, so if you got any suggestions, let me know. But, yeah. They say videos is always popping, I think. Oh, for real? Yeah. Uh, it, it's like I always got to scroll to, like, row 100 to find a good video on that website. Do you ever rewatch the same video or you get tired of that shit? I got a whole account on Pornhub with favorite videos saved to my shit. Right, 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 right. Do you actually go to that particular scene in that video, or you I just do. play it out? I sure the fuck do go exactly to that same scene every time. I never watched the full thing in porn. I don't know. I just watched the scene, bus and got down, keep it moving, and go no, to the next one. I don't watch the whole. I don't watch a whole um a whole video like ever. Yeah, it's, yeah they be kind of long though. An hour forty five minutes, forty five minutes. Whatever. <laughs> I need is three minutes, maybe. I'm out of y'all video. Do you subscribe to anybody OnlyFans? Am I? No, I am not. Okay. Would you do an OnlyFans? I to this girl, but it was too complicated and I stopped. What do you mean it was complicated? What the hell you doing now? I, first, she, for, it was like something about her. It's something like a video of her popped up on my Twitter. And I went to her page, it was like subscribe. And then I went to go click it. And I think, I don't know what happened. It was just like, I got to do a little bit too much to subscribe. I'm all right. How much was you, how much you wanted you to subscribe for? I think it was twelve ninety nine. Damn, that was cheap. I was going to pay that. Huh? I was going to pay that. Well, you was going to pay, she must be was fine. She was cold. And you know what? I never really got off into the OnlyFans thing. I never really paid for anything like that anyway. But I wanted to see, it was, the video was like, she was going crazy. She was, she was um, doing on it. Uh, playing with herself and squirting, and I was like, "Shit!" You ever made a girl squirt before? Two of them. Damn, how you do that? I want to know how to do that. I still don't know to this day, but I'm gonna tell you one thing though. I ain't like it after after a while, it cause um it smelled like fish. It was like I think it, I don't know. I ain't like it. I ain't like it at all. Do you have to wash the sheets? Did on bed? Got to wash the sheets right after that? It's like a a stain. It left a stain in my sheets. Um, even when I wash it, you can still see the outline of it, and I definitely, I was like, yeah, I don't like that. Then the one girl, we was doing it on my couch, and my shirt, I didn't even know I made her squirt. My shirt was soaking, like, I thought the bitch pissed on me, but I'm like, nah, it had to be squirt. This was my first time. Then the next day, I was, I was sitting on that same couch, and I smelled like fish or something. Mm. What the fuck is that smell? Then I realized, like, damn... It was that girl from yesterday. So I really don't too much care for squirters. It's not really what it's all cracked up to be in my eyes. Damn, a fish. What kind of fish smell like tilapia? Fucking flower? It, rim? Catfish? No, it, it, it definitely smell like fish. It was not pleasant at all. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, and then my Damn. nasty ass, I did it to one of them. I was constantly doing it to one of them after that, though. But, uh, like, I I don't really care for squirters. Like, would you have your strap on? Was you eating it? Was you playing with it? Like, what were you doing, though? Say? Let me tell you, because I'm a real-ass nigga. I, one of the girls was actually right in my face. And it went down. But, like, luckily it didn't go in my mouth. It, like, went down my chin, down my, what's the name? Down my shirt and shit. I was like, yeah, you nasty bitch. You can't be doing this. Man, you call her a nasty bitch? I call myself a nasty bitch. Uh, yeah, that was piss mixed with a little bit of nut. Yeah, uh, I don't really care for squirt. Yes. I, and then I looked it up on Google. I said, what is squirt? And it said it was pissed. And I was pissed. So I don't really care for it. Mm. So you like eating ass, then, basically? Do I like eating ass? Is what yeah. you said? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't do it to everybody, but I do it, yeah. That's a freaky shit right there. I love doing that too, though. So I like it. It's not, I don't have nothing against it. You make them watch before they do it? Or after it? Oh, oh, most definitely. Anytime I've ever had sexual intercourse, the girl has washed up. She watched before she come over there? But like, why didn't she do that? Um, uh, it, sometimes when they get here, sometimes before, uh, sometimes before they get here. Facts. You gotta watch. You gotta watch your ass, ain't it? Yeah, cause um, I be damned if I eat somebody ass and I get it and I get a fucked up taste. I'm gonna be pissed. Oh. Man, I ain't playing. 
I'm gonna be you, pissed, bro. Well, you might see some fig trees in there. So. I'm telling you, man, I would hate that day because I'm going in. Exactly. And then you did an album. Then your album dropped called uh, Demons. Do you fight a lot of demons? I used to. I, um, I'm pretty content right now and happy in life. What kind of demons you be fighting? I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it real. Right. Right now, in this moment, none. I'm very. Um, I, I overcame a lot of those. Uh, but I had a lot of childhood demons I was fighting in my adulthood that was blocking a lot of blessings for me. Like what? Um. Oh well, I was molested as a child from six and a half to twelve. By who? That affected me tremendously in like by relationships. Who? A lot of things. So, well, who was it by? My um, my stepdad, my younger brothers and sisters' dad. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Did so, you tell your parents? Did they, how did they find out? I came out to my mom. I told my mama I was I was gay, and I told her I was molested at the same time. Mm -hmm. Did she leave him? Did she call the cops? Like what happened? They, uh, they was already divorced, probably like a year before year or two before I came out to her about it. Uh yeah, we instantly we went right to the police as soon as I told her. Um CPS was involved. My brothers and sisters had to stop going over there. Yeah, it was it was it was deep for like a couple of years because we had to go to court for it. Mm. What was he doing like? Like what was going on when I was being molested? Yeah, like um only oral sex. It was he he tried to have sex with me once, but it, it didn't budge. And he did this for six years, you said? Six to 12? Yeah, from like six and a half to like 11 and a half, 12. Like, uh, how did that make you feel, though, for the most part? Like, you know, when, somebody was taking advantage of you. When it was going on, you know, um, when you start to, when you, when you become sexually, when a, when a man rapes you or anything like that, you instantly grow yeah, up. Basically yeah, basically he was raping yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sick. You, Sick of. you grew up in your mind. At that moment, I, I I felt I felt ugly, man. I felt so low. I felt I felt disgusted. I didn't know what was happening to me. Um I didn't understand like where my mama and them was at when this shit was going on. Um, I didn't I didn't love myself for years, bro. Like I didn't I didn't like myself or nothing. I never felt worthy. I just felt so low, bro. Why? What made you come out at eleven instead of earlier? The oh, taking place. when I was fifteen, it started. It ended like he stopped doing it when I was um like eleven or twelve. I came out when I was fifteen, and I guess it was one of those things where I was afraid to speak up. Um, and then like he told me that if he could molest me, he wouldn't touch my younger brothers and sisters. My younger sisters. So I guess it was one of those, let me just keep quiet type of thing. What, what would he do to say? And what would your mother do? So he would do it like late late nights, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, my mom room was all, was upstairs, and he would um, always come downstairs into my room. Um, my mama said, you know, when I, when everything came out, she was like, I, you know, I, I, really, I didn't know. And she was, like, thinking, like, uh, he was just going to the bathroom type of thing. But, like, no, nah, he would always come into my room. And your mother never figured this out of him. She never wondered where he was at? No, because it didn't last for, like, hours type of thing. It was, like, but then again, you got to think about it. Like, this was someone trusted around. She had three kids. but She's, there's, you know, they was buried for quite some time. So it's not. I don't, I don't, I don't think she would think like, yeah, he's down there molesting one of my kids or blah, it is. But I know for a fact, wholeheartedly, my mama didn't know. My mama's not that type of mother, never has been. And when she found out, she took the proper, um, proper steps as a parent. So, you know, like, no, I don't know, I don't know what her thoughts was. And then, I know for a fact it was like three in the morning most of the time, two in the morning. So she was more than likely knocked the fuck out. Did you ever scream or he threatened Never. to kill you or beat you? Anything like that? Never. It was one of those, just let me do it to you and I won't do it to your sisters. Did he ever, like, beat on you? Never. 
No. Wow. Uh, yeah. Did you ever try to get therapy, counseling, to seek help? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I still go to therapy to this day. Um. Back then, it I really was like. Back then, it was it was purposeless. Back then, because I really didn't. I wasn't uh, uh, accepting to talking to strangers about my problems as a teenager. Now, as an adult who really take my mental health serious, I was like, shit, I definitely want to, I want to be at peace with this shit. So I got a life coach and then I became, then I got off into spirituality and then I got a therapist and and they helped me through a lot. How do you feel like going to school knowing that you were being, you know, being raped by your stepfather? Uh Oh man, it was it was bad because some days I would go to school and my um private part would be burning from the night before, and I used to hate going to the bathroom to pee because it would burn. So he would try to so he would use uh, vaginal sex to penetration. He um, it was only oral sex, and he would he would pretty much just like do it so long to like my private part was raw. And, like, it just hurt it so bad, bro. Like, and then, like, sometimes he would stick his tongue inside of me. And I think that's why I don't really care for penetration when I had sex with women. Because, like, as a shit that I was ex- I was exposed to it as a child. So, like, yeah, my, my shit used to burn sometimes. He used to give you penetration, give you oral sex. And I would have to give it to him as well. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. How cool. What was your mother's reaction to this news right here? This this deficit, this this tragedy right here. Oh man, I remember when I told her. If if you could feel every emotion except for happiness at once, that's what she felt. Like, and then I had to go to court and I had to tell the same stories over and over again. And I, my mama still to this day haven't fully recovered from that. She always tell me. When I die, I pray I go to hell so I can torture him. That's what she always tell me. And I'll be like, yo, I found peace with it, so you got to find peace with it. My mama hasn't fully recovered to this day. She's mad at you or she's mad at him? Or... She's, mad at, she's mad at him. She's mad at herself. Uh, she's mainly mad at, of course, him because he took advantage, you know? Uh, no... Usually, people like that tell a teacher at school or grandma or somebody like that. Uh, how did you just hell that in? Like, you I told like you was the one to blame. I told. I don't think I ever felt like I was the one to blame, or whatever. It's not your fault, though. By the way. Yeah, no, for sure. I I knew that early on. Um, I really did it to protect my sisters. Um, I told my best friend Trayvon, and who actually had to testify in court. I told him in eighth grade or whatever. He was the only person I ever, ever told. And then I told my brother when I was in 10th grade. Um, But to hold that in, and that's why I told, because um, Mm. I felt felt so ugly and so low for years, even coming into high school. I never loved myself. I never liked myself. Um, And it became... A, a big burden, like a chip on my shoulder, like <clears throat> like physically, I can hear these demons screaming at me, like, and I just wanted to get it off my chest. And literally, the moment I told, it literally got off my chest. But I didn't know it was gonna take like years of recovery to fully heal from that shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I just you know just keep getting counseling. It. He getting the help. You just thought about like taking like I don't know clinical help for this and like medicine. Mm-hmm. I don't know anxiety. I try my be- I have anxiety. I try my best to stay away from medication. Um, and and I try to work on my mental health. Um, just naturally, or whatever. I'm not. I'm not really one of those people who want to depend on a medication to decrease the pain and the demons and shit i feel like i can do that on my own and i am doing that on my own like i don't need no medication or none of that shit uh it is it to me now as a grown-ass woman who overcame a lot it's one of those it is what it is type of things i can't take that all them nights i was molested is either you gonna 
um, dwell in that pain or you going to fucking elevate from it. And I chose to elevate from it and be the voice for like a lot of women who ain't got no voice. Right, right. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, ah. uh, On a brighter note, I got two more for us to go. What is your favorite sex position? What's your what's your most used sex position? I should say, uh, uh doggy style or like sixty nine. Mm. Mm, typical. Is exactly. Mm. Yeah. OG styles, basically. No, yeah. Uh, have you turned any girls out? Man, that's a crazy question. Yeah, a lot of them. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many? Uh, I've never counted, but over my hmm, at least eight off the bat I can think of right now. <laughs> How big is your strap on? Which one? You got to have. Um, I think my biggest is like eight, eight inches. Jesus Christ. Does it look like a real penis, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah. With veins in it and all? Mm -hmm. Is it battery operated? It's not battery. It's all me operated. It's no battery operated. Wow. Uh, interesting. Hey, listen, Lucy, I appreciate you sharing your story with us. Oh, uh, good. I appreciate the vibes, man. man I appreciate quiet. you for having me. Uh, for much, lo much love. Do you have any shout outs or anything? Uh, yeah, shout out to my team, man. We just knocked out another movie. Uh, we just knocked out getting us a deal. Shout out to God always and my whole spiritual team who protect me on the other side. Fact, that's fact. Hey, uh, you be safe and uh, definitely got to have you back over here ASAP. Appreciate you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Right, we out. All right.